Welcome to Malcolm Reed's How to Barbecue Right, a podcast where we talk about barbecue, share recipes, and discuss all things delicious. And now here's your host, Malcolm and Rochelle Reed. Hey, welcome back to the How to Barbecue Right podcast. I'm your host, Malcolm Reed, coming in hot. <laughs> I'm joined by my lovely wife, Miss Southern Shell, as always. Shell, I'm not as hot. You're not as hot. You've been, you've been in there hard editing this morning. I know. I've been running all over the place. I had to get me another cup of coffee. I had to go get Michael's mullet touched up. <laughs> got, got, my, got mine trimmed a little. Got the beard knocked back some. You went to Aldi? I went to Aldi. Oh, man, I did. I did. So, Tyler, what's going on, man? You doing all right, first uh, off? Fantastic. We're jumping man. right into this one because <laughs> Tyler texted me. It had to be like 10 30, 10 45 last night. We'd done watch the Bulldogs pull off. Yay. Let's talk about that real quick. You want to talk about that before we get. Okay. So, Shell was outside Bulldogs. just ringing her cowbell <laughs> all over. She, she jumped on the golf cart, was riding all around, ringing. So I'm it. so tired today. That's why you're so tired. You stayed up partying. <laughs> The Mississippi State Bulldogs now have a national championship. That's their first one. They've Ever. been a, how long is that school? Is eighteen hundred forty seventeen? It's a long time. Eighteen seventy eight. Yeah, is that what it was? Eighteen seventy eight. Yeah. First national title win. Congratulations to the Mississippi State Bulldog baseball team. It's been a fun few College weeks World, watching them play. College World Series champions. Mm-hmm. I was a little nervous. Game one. Me too. They, they, they put that pitcher in. He gave up. What well, they give up seven runs? They took him out in the first, put another guy in. He gave up a couple because the bases were already loaded. They lost, what, eight to two, I think. They did, after that, they did pretty good that game. They could have just got through that first without yeah. no runs. But then the second game, which was Tuesday night, they put it on them. It was like 13 to. We, I, I, think, the, I think I had a big part to do with that. It was me drinking Miller Lights every time they scored. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good night. They scored 13. <laughs> but I was like, man, they made it to game three. That's the furthest I've seen them go. Yeah. I know they've been. I mean, how many times? They've been to the College World Series. It was, they were like 12, 12 times. times, I think. It was either 11 or 12 yeah. times. Well, they, they're champions now. Yep. Last night they put it on them. It was a pitching. Actually, the pitcher pitched great. Both pitchers pitched great. They only used two pitchers. And the first one went six innings, yeah, I think. Yeah, he had a no-hitter. He goes into six. I think he'd only passed three people on ball, so it was a great game. I mean, it was, but the defense is what I mean, their bats came alive, they, they ran the bases good. Vandy made a lot of errors, yeah. But uh, they, watching them play, yeah. there's uh, they didn't they didn't get many pop. I mean, there's a few pop flies outfield, most of it was infield, balls hit hard. Those get their their infield was making some defensive plays, it was awesome, yes. That one play where uh. The second baseman threw it to the first baseman, and the first baseman wasn't even turned around oh, yet. Oh, yeah, that was early in the game, yeah, too. Yeah, He just raced over there because he was trying <laughs> to get the ball. That was a great play. but They were they were playing like a well-oiled machine. They were. That was as good a college baseball as I've seen them play. Yep. It was awesome. But after that um, – You went to Aldi. <laughs> no, Tyler texted me. It was like 1045. I was Tyler was up. They, they they had did you notice on ESPN two they had a show just ready to go about thunder and lightning yeah right after and it's like they knew Mississippi State was going to win they had that show ready to go. and I watched most of that about was it Palmero and uh, Will Clark yeah Rafael Palmero Will Clark that's a good show but anyway Tyler texts me he's like man I got an idea for out the smoke he's like he was in, I guess you were in Aldi yeah and they had this fifty nine ninety nine kettle grill he said we need to get one to review on it just what you could get for under hundred bucks or whatever. So I was like, all right, I'm taking Michael to get a haircut at the Man Cave Salon right beside the Aldi. So we went and got a haircut and I went over there and they had three left. So I grabbed one of them. And Is it the size of a Weber? I don't know. I ain't okay. opened it up. I didn't look at it. How I, big I is the ball? It's a CG-1000 without that coin. <laughs> Charco Grill 1000. <laughs> it's like no brand. Michael name. picked it up off the shelf and like, I said, put okay. that in the basket, son. <laughs> so he threw it in the basket. It's in the back of the expo right now. Long, a little bit before I met you, I spent about... 40, 50 bucks on a charcoal that, grill. And I won a lot of chicken money with that grill. It was like the Aussie roundabout or what they walk yes. about. Yes. Is that, is that what it was? It was a little square one, though. Yes. We toted that grill all over the place cooking <laughs> chicken. I burned a bunch of chicken on that grill. I won, I won a lot of money on it, though. 
Somebody posted that Aldi Grill on the Let's Get to Cooking page, and supposedly it gets the it gives the Weber a run for its money. That's what they were saying. Hey. We're, six, we're fixing to find out. <laughs> I'm happy with a lot of quality. Oh, once we get, yeah, once we get the review in it, I want to pip it out. Like we're going we're gonna to see what all kinds of accessories we can set that grill up with. It's, it might be a five dollars $600 grill when we get through with it. <laughs> what, what, you trying to like Vortex, grill oh, yeah, grade? Like, hold on, a new thermometer, maybe some new wheels, some lights, <laughs> a shelf. Hydro. <laughs> System. <laughs> get Mark involved in this. Yeah, oh, we're going really to. Go yeah. crazy. I rig a guru up on it where you get a temperature <laughs> control. <laughs> we can do all kinds of stuff. Well, you get one of those rotisserie. Yeah, the, the rotisserie. Yeah. I think I still have one of those. It'll fit a Weber. It might fit that one. Oh, this one's what? got an upper shelf. The Weber don't have the upper shelf. Ooh. It shows it loaded down. Is it round? Is it kettle? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's kettle grill. I mean, it's got to, if it'll hold coals, it'll cook. Now, how oh, yeah. long you let it get rained on one good time with coals in it and let it, let it rust out the bottom, I doubt it'll last very long. But It'll last a season. It's, yeah, we'll fix it. We'll find it'll it. It'll last a summer. That's what we ought to do. Just put it out, like, set it, take it down to Cenotopia and Leave let it. it sit out in the rain and see what it does to it. <laughs> how long would it take that grill to deteriorate? I know what it did to your cheap fire pit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it rusted the crap out of it, yeah. didn't it? Um, you also bought stuff to do uh, BLTs today for I lunch. Did. That's what we're going to break out the Ranger Grill. We're going to put some bacon on the flat top on it. Fresh I stopped at AgriPro, and they had a. I saw their Facebook ad. It's like they got the people from. I don't know who the guy said he came here before and bought a bunch of stuff. When I talked to him, he like, talked to me about barbecue, but it's uh, Shifton Farms, uh, fresh peaches and tomatoes. And did you buy peaches too? No. Okay. I didn't get any peaches. I bought twenty dollars worth of tomatoes though. Some big old. Beefsteak tomatoes. He's like, what are you doing with them? I'm like, BLTs. He said, oh, you want the big ones. I said, you already know. <laughs> you already know. <laughs> but, yeah, so I bought $20 worth of tomatoes. How do you uh, make your BLT? Bread. Do you toast the bread? Yeah, on the one side. Yeah. I don't toast both sides. I yeah. just like one side toasted. Blue plate mayo. Then I put pepper all over that. Like, I'd like to pepper my mayo. Mm-hmm. Then I put my tomatoes down. Let's see. Yeah, I put the tomatoes. It's been a in, year. It's been a year. <laughs> I put the tomatoes down, and I salt and pepper those. Then I put my lettuce down, and then I put my Wright's bacon on top of that. And then I do mayo and more pepper on the top piece of bread, close it up. That's a that's how I roll. That's pretty similar. I, 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 Sometimes I leave out the lettuce. <laughs> I just like bacon and tomato sandwich. What kind of lettuce do you get? Iceberg? Yeah, you got to just get old classic. Yeah. The iceberg lettuce in the head. Not You, know, you got to wash it yourself. Pull that core out. Pull that core out, yeah. <laughs> How do you do yours? About the same. I might um, add a little salt to my mayonnaise. Do you? Like TX? You know what's good? It's TX. TX is very you good. You don't even TX on a tomato? Man, it's jam up. It's, it's. That's what I had for breakfast. A slice of there tomato. Was, somebody had left a, a little tomato in there on the counter. It was like a pink tomato. It was, it was the color they get. They didn't get fully red. Mikey brought them in. I said, that tomato been laying there for two days. I'm going to eat it. So I sliced it up, peeled it, sliced it up, put me some TX on it, and that's what I had. Was it good? Heck yeah, man. It tastes like sunshine. Is this the first? That was uh, my first. That was my first one, and then I got these big ones. So yeah. we're going to see how they stack up. It's tomato I'm taking time. them back. If they're not good, if they're not good, I'm taking them back get my $20 back. <laughs> <laughs> he told me to give a shout out. So. <laughs> what are you going to take them back? <laughs> I, well, I just signed up for some real good tomatoes, man. I didn't want none of those hot house tomatoes with no flavor. I need something. You've been waiting sunshine. all year. Been yeah. Waiting all year, yeah. Fourth of July to me, fruit wise, fresh tomatoes. That's when they come in. Watermelon. Then you get your watermelons, and then you get the sweet corn. You get those three things, man. That's I mean, God, it's good. Yeah. Sweet corn it's, is a little later usually. It's usually after the fourth, but yeah. it's right around. That's when you're getting your first sweet corn. Mm-hmm. Somebody did a TikTok video on the. You know, we said we we're gonna do it on the lote. They did it with the uh, same way you do it, but they crushed up the. Fire Cheetos or whatever they're uh, called. Flaming Hot. Yeah, the Flaming Hots. And then they did the, they rolled it in that after they did the cheese. Oh. So, I said, I'm doing that. So you're saying they took sweet corn. Sweet corn, cooked it. They didn't show how they cooked it. They yeah. just had it. Mayo. The lady said, put that extra mayo. Don't hold back on her. <laughs> she wanted extra mayo. And then they did the, they just did parm cheese. But I like the cotilla yeah. cheese. And then they did, um, instead of doing like tahini or something like that, they rolled it in flaming hot Cheeto crumbs. Did they do any um, cilantro or lime? No, no. That's far as I got. 
probably get rolled in like taki dust and oh, cilantro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, a good, that's a good one there. You could do the blue ones too, the the fuego blue. Have you ever had those? <laughs> yeah. I think that's what it is. Make it look real weird. Yeah. Um, Red, white, and blue. That'd be a Fourth of July corn cob. Oh, there you go. <laughs> this is where ideas are made, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it is. Um, real quick, I want to talk about the Palmer home. What are we up to, Shell? We are over sixteen thousand dollars, right? Yes, I knew we were going to get. I knew it was rolling in there. We're about that's three quarters of the way. Mm-hmm. We're only... over three quarters of the way. We've got two months left. So I think we're going to hit our 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 target. Yeah. Shout out to James Ferrer. Ooh. Ferrer. He's raised over twenty five hundred dollars. Wow, he's good. he's in the lead. He's mm-hmm. coming. He is he's lead. coming to the coming to the special event. VIP class. Yeah. VIP but um, class. help us. We're trying to raise twenty thousand dollars for the Palmer Home by Labor Day. If you have any other, if you want to find more information, go to howtobarbecuewrite dot com forward slash Palmer. Just That's had to it. throw that in. We uh, so Wiener Fest was last week. Yep. That was next thing on my list. All right. <laughs> well, you got me thinking about Palmer Home. Cause yeah. we, so we had some Wienerfest shirts made, and they were a huge hit. They were like, hilarious. Yeah. We saw, what did they say on them? Um, I them survived Wienerfest 21, and to be frank, I relished it. That's a, I thought that was pretty good. <laughs> Who came up with it, Katie? I think Katie did, did yeah. I That's think that was one. all Katie. Mikey had one, but it wasn't PG. <laughs> 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 one part we messed up on is we ordered our usual order, which is mostly like barbecue sizes. Yeah. You Start, get, you, ha- you order heavy in the, yeah. That's, you, that's the medium, barbecue medium. You, or, you order heavy in the extra large yeah. cup. And we had a lot of kids that wanted Wienerfest shirts, and we didn't have that many medium We got to order some more. Yeah. But we donated the proceeds of those shirts to the Palmer Room, and we raised, what, over $1,400? Over $1,400. Yeah, that was good. And that's, that's not included in the, yeah. yeah. That's that was just a one day. That's good. Yeah. So anytime we can do anything like that, that's great. Um, the guy that won, how many, Tyler was in the hot dog eating contest. <laughs> yeah. You want to go ahead and talk about that, Tyler? What, what did you think? It was, what was the experience? Yeah. How many did you eat? It was great, first of all. Uh, it, it was completely sunny outside until, like, it was weird. It was like fate. As soon as we sat down, as soon as Malcolm said go, it started downpouring. Like you wouldn't Monsoon believe. Monsoon level. So everybody kind of got behind us and it got everybody cheering. And <laughs> it was like, it was a really like cool place to be. Um, and then Cheyenne, uh, one of the, one of the lovely ladies that works here, her husband was sitting next to me and he was, he had been trash talking all day, <laughs> like coming up to me, like you're going down, man, you're going down. So it was like pumping me up. <laughs> Hadn't eaten in like 24 hours. I was good to go. And once you start down the dogs, man, like I, I to, to, all right, I ate six. I could have had 12. I easily, like, my stomach could have fit 12. It's just not enough time, not enough. The bread is too dense to get it all down. Yeah. In three minutes, because that's what we did. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> it was a it was We should have given five. I, I mean, and I don't know. I think, I think that was perfect. Because mm-hmm. it's a it's more of, it's, now you know, so you can prepare. I've got to learn to eat them fast. Yeah. <laughs> because it's. It's the, not a capacity yeah. issue. I mean, the, it's the winner eats seven, seven, I think. Yeah. I think most people ate five, six. six. Yeah. 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 In seven. three minutes. But it was it, it, the eating part, which is what I thought would be bad, the actually physically holding that down, what probably wasn't the bad part. It was actually getting through them in that time frame. And like people started dunking them, and at first we were kind of like not sure if we were going to allow that, but then we kind of were like, you know, everything goes. Yeah. yeah. So y'all handed out cups and stuff and three bottles of water, and my mistake was I only put one of the little bottles of water in there, so it was not nearly enough water. So I was dunking like a fourth of my dog at a time, so it was just taking too much time for me to dunk it, and then I ran out of water. Yeah. So, but I think the winner, I think he filled his glass entirely. Yeah. And he was going at it, man. Yeah, he was dunking. I didn't see. I was on the opposite end of the table. I was keeping up with yours, or I was just heckling, really. <laughs> you were. <laughs> Come on, Tyler. I didn't have no clue how many any, anyone ate because I was kind of just watching that end of the table, and it was crowded under there. But it, it didn't seem like I was like I could probably do that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> What if you had had a big jar I'm, of blue plate, just dunking them in the blue plate? Would that have helped them go down uh, any better? <laughs> Alex. Problem. At what cost? So Alex took his, and he would just had. I looked at him one time, he had like three three dogs, no buns, and he was just <laughs> eating them all three at the same time and just mowed through them. I was like, dang, but then he had to eat three buns. Buck stops there because yeah. you had to eat that bread, and that was tough. Yeah, I kind of started doing that too, and then I realized it really it just wasn't saving me any time because yeah. the bread was so hard. Yeah, Yeah. so we – um. 
the, that particular bread you're supposed to like steam first. Oh yeah. We ordered it from Performance Food Group, and um, they use it in you stadiums, know, ball, stadiums, stuff. ballparks, all that stuff. But you're supposed to steam it first. Well, it, those didn't get steamed. Ah. <laughs> so they were like bread on bread on bread. Yeah. Now. So- now you I don't know. I think that's part of the strategy. <laughs> I will say though, we, we did. We will get the cheap, fluffy bread. Cheap crab bread. Yeah. So everything I can see about a three minute hot dog eating contest nine is like the record. Yeah, nine to twelve. Which, right? Yeah, yeah. and I don't. But but you look at the Coney Island one, and I think it's ten minutes, mm-hmm. and the record seventy five or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Wow. That's a big jump. But maybe like, with Joey Chestnut hadn't done a three minute one. I don't know. Because I would think he could Maybe. eat more than if you can eat seventy five in ten minutes. Surely that's a you got to be eating more than nine and three. It the don't only, add up, you know. The only thing I could think of is like after the first couple, you're swallowing your throat, kind of like adjusts to what you're eating, and then it becomes easier to swallow. I don't know. And he's a professional, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but it was fun. We did the wiener toss. We got a TikTok video out of that. Tyler put that together. It's that was a huge hit. We kind of threw that together just to kind of grab some footage yeah. and have fun. But so many people wanted to actually get wieners tossed yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know if they wanted to be on TikTok. Yeah. They wanted to get the wieners thrown at them. They came and hunted me down. They'd be like, hey, we really want to do the wiener toss. Oh, they kept now. asking me, when are they doing a wiener toss? So I told them, you got to go find TikTok Tyler. He's the one in charge of the wiener toss. Because we had it set up over there by the trailer where we had T-shirts. And we had like just a blow. We, we we couldn't find it. We was like, oh, we we'll get a swimming pool. It'll help keep the dogs in it, you know. And all we could find was like one of the blow up ones. So we had to blow that thing up. It worked. But it worked. Mm-hmm. But when it rained, it filled up with water. <laughs> and then there's all these dogs floating. <laughs> in. So Mikey has to go dump that. He said it was disgusting. <laughs> He's like, I got to turn it over with all these dogs floating in it. Rain water. Uh, rainy dogs use. <laughs> yeah. That was hilarious. But next year, you guys have to bring your dogs to Wiener Fest because there was only one, and he was scared of the wiener. No, like, yeah. I he was we need old to train. Dog. We need to get us a dog we can train. Yeah. Work with him all year to catch dogs. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you don't start with dogs. You just start with something smaller, like viney sausages or something. If we had had like a gold retriever or lab up here, mm-hmm. we had an old weenie dog. <laughs> yeah, he was old as hell. <laughs> if he ate that dog, it probably killed him. <laughs> That's the whole thing. Some guy ran up and was like cannibalism because <laughs> a wiener dog, <laughs> dog eating a dog. Then we had a kids art contest. That was a huge hit. We had a yeah. lot of kids want to come draw t- side. I didn't even get to go see those. I did, didn't either. Did the rain wash it all away? I, I guess. Think so, yeah. But we so, passed out bubbles and candy for yeah. you know that. Um, had snow, uh, snow cones or something. Tell you, shout out to uh, was it Taylor's Italian Ice? Yep. They were doing. They, they came and did Italian ice. That was a big hit. Um, So we loaded the BFO yes. down with hot dogs. How big is the BFO? It is an outlaw stick burner. Yeah, I think, I want to say the cook chamber is like nine and a half feet by 40 inches wide shelf, I think, something like that. I think so. It's a, The grill itself is about 11, 12 foot long. It's a It's monster. huge. Yeah, it's a big grill. We didn't have any idea how many hot dogs it would fit, but we didn't double stack them, just one row, one layer, and... All the way across the cooking surface, and it held 598 dogs is what we put on it. We estimated it would hold about 800, and we were we being generous, know. yeah, so we could, you know, make sure we had enough. Yeah, it was. Uh, it looked. It was full. <laughs> you could have squeezed the dog here or there if you'd have wanted to, but so we kept it closed and let the dogs cook. And people would come up and get their little ticket, and you'd lift get a up. peek. Yeah, you get a peek, and you had to guess how many dogs was on it. People love that too. That was a good. Heck yeah, hit. we didn't do that with something else. Did the winner guess like right on the money? No, or? two people went over. Two people were tied for over number six hundred. Wow. But this is like the Price is Right. You had to be <laughs> under. You couldn't be over. <laughs> over and it's game over. They wasn't over under. The guy that actually won was like five seventy six. I think yeah. something wow. like that. Still pretty close. Well, that was the closest. We had some people. I mean, we got people guessing all over the place. Yeah. One little girl was so proud. She brought her ticket over to Mikey. And she put one million, <laughs> and she was so proud of that ticket. And Mikey took it and he looked at it and he said, "That's a lot of hot dogs." And he just dropped it in the bucket. <laughs> and then one lady put like twelve. I was like, "How could you even put 12? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like we just had that one yeah, door yeah, that with the hot it. dogs. That's but it. there was 12 more. Than- but she was pretty sure. She's like, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> and when Mikey told her, he said, don't you want to go look again? They'll give you a peek. And she said, you think I should? And she came back. She still didn't write, but like 80 or something <laughs> yeah, like that. Oh, my like, goodness. Man, that's one moment. I don't know if she needs to drive. <laughs> she, that's what she... <laughs> And so we passed out free hot dogs all day. Yep. We had all the toppings. We had a ton left over. Yeah. We, we bought a lot of dogs. How many dogs, dogs did we totally buy? 1,300, 1,200? So. Well, know. we did corn dogs, too. Yeah. Justin Reed from uh, Tastemaker came out and uh, used our, Bi- our Bayou Classic double fryer and brought some corn dog batter and mixed it up. And we took half. Instead of doing full corn dogs, we just we had the kids split them in half and skewer them. And man, he was making those corn dogs were delicious. They were awesome. I was I as had good that. as a pronto pup. Better. I think that might have been. I don't know if they make pronto pup batter. Or yeah, it might be better than pronto pup. It was just the right amount of everything. Did you see how he was frying them? I didn't get to see it. Well, he didn't see. Normally, when he had called me, he asked me. He's like, "Y'all, y'all want me to do corn dogs?" And I was like, "I'm thinking." So we just kind of like a fry, a, deep, a fry daddy, and we're trying to fry corn. He's like, "Man, I got a corn dog cooker." And I'm like, what do you mean? He's like, it's, you know, the professional that goes in a corn dog pronto prep trailer with the little clips and all that. But he got to looking for it and somebody had it down in Jackson. He didn't have time to get it up here. So he said, I think I got a, you know, just a double basket fryer. And I said, well, we got one of those at the shop, you know, it'll fry. But so he had to take each individual corn dog and kind of hold it. Like when he battered it. Yeah, he would batter it. it. And you can't just let it go because it'd go to the bottom and squish all up. So he kind of swirled it in the grease and it'd take like 30 seconds. So he did that for probably... Two or three hundred little corn dogs. Yeah, man, it was. I really appreciate that. <laughs> that was awesome, and they were he good. Did that they were for hit. Hours, too. Yeah. yeah, they and were hit. He would fill up a, you know, a, a aluminum pan, aluminum pan, yeah. and Michael or one of the kids would run them up to the front, and we'd pass them out. But they were a huge, huge hit. And then we did. You did apple cobbler. Yeah. So let's talk about the apple cobbler. It was. It was. I tried it cold the next day. It was delicious. Super easy. It so what's the recipe, show? Apple pie filling in a can. Put the, it on the bottom. The big can. Yeah, big can. Yeah. Well, my recipe's a little Do off. We use because two? Was it two cans per pan? We used two cans per it's more like three cans per pan. Because I had that one big thing from Sam's. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. My recipe is a little off because we did it for such a yeah. large amount. But I'd say two cans. Then we did the cinnamon toast crunch seasoning. On the apple pie filling. On the apple pie filling. Cake mix just Regular Bop. yellow cake mix. Yep. Dry on top and then squeezy butter on, on that. Squeeze, <laughs> melted squeezy butter in the microwave and just put it all over the top. Blue bottle. Because we had that's what we had yeah. left over. And put them on the pellet grill at 350 until they browned up. It, it was took like, about a little over an hour. We had it loaded. You had yeah. five pans and one, and one iron one 885. Yeah. But, man, people were going crazy over that. And I put a little extra cinnamon toast. One guy ate half a pan, I think. <laughs> <laughs> they would have done a contest on that. <laughs> it was really, really Next good. Next time we need to do that, a pie eating contest, where it's just to see who can eat the pie the fastest. Have you yeah. ever seen them do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do them all on the Traeger, and you, you get, everybody gets their own pie, and you can't use your hands. You can only use your, your <laughs> face, and you got to eat the pie the fastest. That's a good one to do. So we're getting into we're getting um, into the contest eating. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so let's say I'm just uh, Would you do that one, Tyler? I would. Uh, I would. <laughs> I'll do anything, mostly. I'll do anything. <laughs> you could be our crash test dummy. <laughs> Speaking of crash test dummies, we got a uh, new mannequin around the show. <laughs> we, <Yeah>. we do. <laughs> what did y'all name him? Randy or something like that? I don't or know. Everybody, Ed or Earl tell, everybody or... has a different name. There's an unofficial. There's like unofficial names. Then I posted him on Wienerfest Day to see like what the best caption was, and people were coming up with crazy. We should stuff. do a thing where we let people name him. Yeah. Best name. Yeah. Let's That's vote on it. Do a poll. Vote on the best name for the How to Barbecue Right Mannequin. I'm going to pick out like three and then yeah. go for that. So the plan with this guy is to do videos with him. He's going to be a stand-in, <laughs> like a body double. He kind of looks like Mark Williams. Yeah, so. He does. <laughs> it's scary. Every time I walk in and catch him out of my peripheral, I'm like, oh, ah. I was So I went back to the, the shop bathroom yesterday. <laughs> Somebody had him in the, in the shower with, like, the curtain half pulled and had sunglasses on. So I opened up the door to go in there. And I'm like, oh. I thought somebody was in the shower. It got me bad. <laughs> we're, we were filming a video <laughs> in the shower. That's why. Oh, were y'all filming in there? Yeah, we were filming him in the what shower. What kind of videos were y'all filming? <laughs> 
Uh, I'm going to have to get, like, I'm not going to show you the video before it. I'm just going to get you to react to it on TikTok. Okay. I want you to see it. Is it hilarious? Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> I can only imagine. Uh, the interns are doing work with it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So he's supposed to be working around here. Larry or Enos uh, whatever, or whatever yeah, we're calling whatever him. We call him. Um, we're going to have to take a poll to we name him. <laughs> Speaking of him looking like Mark Williams, too, I ha- I brought my son back to see the mannequin. My son is terrified of the mannequin, like terrified. <laughs> so my son came for Winterfest to, like, you know, draw chalk and stuff like that. Yeah. He walked up to Mark Williams and, like, started crying his eyes. He out. thought he so, was a dummy. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So now I know for a certain fact that that. I'm going to have to post this one picture I've got. It's Mark looking at the dummy. <laughs> and they look like, I know you. <laughs> We're going to do, like, a come to life video, yeah. like, the very end. Comes to life and works at the shop for you a day. You just need to get him a Swan Life shirt, like the, the button-up Swan Life shirt, the hat, glasses, <laughs> and some jeans. Yes. And put Stand in for Out the Smoke. <laughs> uh. So, um, but this past weekend was a lot of fun. Wrapped up Winterfest. It's about uh. getting a little too hot to do any more events. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to tell you it's the vacation time now. Yeah. They need to be on the road events. I think your next event is fantasy football drafts. The next thing is it yeah. awesome, man. That's a good one. I want to do ribs, ribs so, and pulled pork and barbecue, barbecue nachos, nachos and sauce and cheese. I already know. Super what classic. Do. Yeah, I'm not doing anything crazy. Um. So last week we didn't talk about it, but you did a Cajun ribeye. I hurt myself last yesterday. <laughs> day before too. What? We'll talk about that at this Cajun rip. <laughs> Tyler made me do it. <laughs> I think he hurt Austin, Mikey, and me. Oh, <laughs> I know what you're talking about. Go ahead. Well, so now let's go ahead and talk about the Cajun rip. Then we'll get into that. <laughs> no. I don't know if I really want to talk about that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's pretty embarrassing. <laughs> so they ordered the hottest hot sauce that they could possibly get. Which, well, I don't know if the I disapproved of this from the get go. So we did it out the smoke. Did we talk about that with yes. Mark? Yes. Like we did it out the smoke and as a hot sauce. Review. Yeah. Then Tyler or he said, "Man, y'all should. We should order the black. Was it the hot ones? Yeah, the hot ones. Season fifteen yeah. package. So we ordered that, or Tyler ordered it, and they were all in there. And the guys, I guess they're dying to try them. I don't know what it was, but we're we're gonna do a video. Well, <laughs> <laughs> plan <laughs> is to do a video out the smoke. Me and Mark trying these. We tried those others. We'll try these and see." We think like a review of yeah. the hot ones. And See so, if you can handle it. Yeah. So yeah. So they so we, they had them lined up, and Tyler looked it up from hot mildest to hottest. Had them as ten hot sauces. Yeah, ten. And they were just opening them up, trying them on crackers, right? And so I, you know, I went through there. I said, well, I probably ought to because if I'm going to do this, I want to know a little bit going yeah, in before so you I, film a video. Yeah. yeah. So I started on like number one and one through six, no problem. There's there's one in there that doesn't taste really good, but as far as heat level, you know, they're not blow your head off. Yeah. But then the last three or four, that stuff's evil. Like the last <laughs> the last two, I don't even man, it's like napalm. <laughs> For real. And I didn't try but a drop or two on a cracker. Well, it hit me about later that night. Like it went, I mean, it lasted for 30, 45 minutes of burn, like drinking water. That's not the worst part. It hit my guts, <laughs> and I'm talking about I hurt for a day, and I was on fire every time I go to the restroom, and it was really frequent, <laughs> and it was it was very very bad. Like I needed one of those donuts they give people when they go, you know, have butt problems <laughs> or whatever it is. It was bad. I'm just now back to normal. He sent and me. I'm to still walk- scared to eat anything. I'm going to be LD today, but I think. <laughs> He sent me in Walgreens. Like, get water. anything. Get anything. If it says cooling or calming. <laughs> That's true. That lady so, probably thought I had some kinds of oh, yeah, she thought she, I just <laughs> had a handful of stuff. Like, <laughs> and some yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> I felt like I needed a milk bath or something. Like I something, something I had to give. But it didn't just so, affect you. Oh, way. no, it wasn't me. Mikey called me and said, man. 
are you all right? <laughs> I was like, no, I'm not. He's like, I'm not either. And Austin's not either. It's like, it was rough around there yesterday. That was what I was going back to the shop bathroom when the dude was in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> That's got to be some form of like exorcism. <laughs> oh, man. So now I've got to try that again. I already know what to expect. I don't even know how to prepare for it. <laughs> I don't even know what to do. I don't think you should. Let the young guys do it. I mean. You just supervise. <laughs> it's kind of a rite of passage. <laughs> when we did it at my house, the guy, like after we were done, one of the guys like rubbed his eyes. Oh, and he, he straight up did not see the rest of it. Like, out of that, or I think it was just the one eye. He did not see out of that eye for the rest of the night. I, I cannot imagine. And this is what I said. Mm-hmm. On those hot ones, actually, like you said, y'all tossed the wing in the sauce. Oh, yeah. And then put more on it. There's no way I, I couldn't because I would not want to touch that piece of chicken to put it. It when it gets on your lips or anywhere because it's like it pulled some skin off the roof of my mouth. I know it did. I told Mike, I was like, man, that's got a raw spot in my mouth because of that hot sauce, and it is like napalm, and it hits you, and then it don't let up. It just gets to burning, gets to burning, gets to burning. For a weak person, I don't know how you could take it. I mean, it would like, probably you go to the hospital or something. That's horrible. <laughs> It's horrible. I don't, I don't know how they make it that hot. I don't understand why you'd want to try it. <sighs> I don't know. It's kind of a rush. Yeah, I get like an adrenaline <laughs> yeah. rush. Oh, it pumps you up. I, mean, I was sweating from everywhere. <laughs> Eyes was watering. You want to, you know, I just had it on a cracker, and it still is. Mm. Good so, times. Cajun ribeye. <laughs> Cajun ribeye. <laughs> it was less hot. It was a lot less hot. <laughs> it was more about flavor. Cajun ribeye was delicious. Like, you know, I, I've never Where'd put, you get that idea? Um, I want to say Applebee's. Didn't the Applebee's used to have the Cajun ribeye? It was one of those. Like chain? Yeah, it was a chain restaurant. Yeah. That was a one steak that I remember going and getting back in the days when that's all I could afford was yeah. Applebee's steak or something <laughs> like that. I thought it was good, you know. But they did a Cajun ribeye. And um, so I said, well, I need something besides just the ribeye. What am I going to do? And I, first I thought about topping it with like a you know, a crab and a cream sauce or something like that. I said, you know what? I'll make a bayou butter. And so it was just, you know, taking more Cajun season, whipping up a compound butter. And for the ribeye, I kept it super simple. I mean, I just seasoned it really, really heavy with Cajun seasoning, let it sit and kind of work into the meat. And it does change the meat. It absorbs, it's almost like a dry, it is a dry brining it. And then when you fired it up, it put a beautiful color on it. I mean, it was, it was, it was awesome. The steak was itself was delicious. It was yeah. a Walmart steak. It wasn't nothing fancy at all. Just a Walmart ribeye. And we've been getting some good ones from Walmart. I mean, we talked about that yeah. I think, last week. But or somewhere, where did we talk about that? Here. That was on the podcast. podcast. Yeah. yeah. It was Chili's, by the way. Was it Chili's that had the case? Yeah. Chili's, yeah. 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 I mean, I, they, that they, seems right. Part of the South Haven Fridays trifecta. had the. Yeah. <laughs> Fridays you know, has Charlie's the, Chili's, Applebee's, and Fridays. Fridays has the Jack Daniels stuff. Yeah, the Jack Daniels. That's where I got the Jack Daniels. <laughs> was it the Jack Daniels sirloin? Yeah, oh, yeah, good. Jack yeah. Daniels sirloin. That was yeah. an excellent re- yeah. recipe. You, you know what else Chili's has? That was good. They got that uh, chicken dish that I did. I think, yeah, Monterey chicken. Monterey or chicken. So what <laughs> that was call, my favorite. Did I call it Monterey chicken when I did it? Uh, I think I, I think did. So, I think yeah. so. Because somebody uploaded it in the group the other day. That That's have it. you ever done that? Nope. It's the really chicken, good. Oh man, chicken with barbecue sauce and cheese and bacon. You and serve that. They always served it with corn and mashed potatoes. Mm-hmm. At Chili's, Chili's used to have some good food. They used to have a prime rib burrito that was like really. Out what of happened this world. to them, man? They got they had a same thing that happened to all of yeah, them. Cut corner, so you cut yeah. the food, then cut the help, and then all of a sudden it's trash. I hadn't um, been to one in so long. I couldn't tell you if it's good or not anymore. Last time I went, you had to do all your ordering and paying through this little thing on the table. It's like a, their version of an iPad that sucked, and you always had to get help to come over to get it to work right. And I was like, what happened to just telling a waitress what you want and then bringing it yeah, to you? Yeah. And then here's my card, you know? No. I don't think they kept that. Progress. <laughs> That's what that is. Progress. I just what? want margaritas. <laughs> And my Monterey chicken. And my Monterey chicken, yeah. Um, why'd you grill it instead of cast iron cook it? Um, because I like grilling. No, <laughs> I mean it would have been fine. You could have done it the same way. Yeah. I was. I mean, if you're trying to get that black t- yeah, flavor, it would have. It would probably. I bet it would be better to throw some of that butter in there, Ooh. and then baste it with that butter and get that good. I need to. I do that really. Yeah. Try it. I just thought for the video using grill grates over charcoal and it's quick. Yeah. It's easy. It's delicious. I mean, it looked cool. 
It's a good way to take a Walmart steak, yeah. cook it really quick and easy, have something really delicious, different. I want to say that know? was probably a, I don't know, what, $12 steak? Probably, know. total. Wasn't much. I yeah. Mean, I don't know. Beef prices are crazy right now. I know we paid for Sam's. They were like sixteen ninety nine for ribeyes the other day. That was whole. They cut up. They were probably eighteen ninety nine. Yeah. I looked for butts today when I went to Kroger to get the rights bacon. And uh, they had, supposedly they had a butt sale, two ninety nine, and they had two butts, and they would not have fed them to the dog. They were the worst looking butts. I was like, man, what's going on? I don't know if it's people are buying stuff for Fourth of July coming up or what, but they didn't have. I mean, it was slim pickings. Well, we've been hearing from two ninety nine for a butt, a pound. Normally they're yeah. ninety nine cents. Yeah, normally they're running them on sale this yeah. week. Yeah, I mean we've been, he- we've been hearing about this shortage coming for I a while. Twenty dollars for some bacon. Nineteen wow. ninety nine for a pack of Wright's bacon. That's, That's not that crazy for Wright's bacon. I thought it was kind of crazy. It's been pretty high for a while. Super Low's got it on sale. Six ninety nine right now. I wouldn't drive it back to South Haven though. For the smaller pack. Charles sent me that last night to text at ten o'clock too. <laughs> That's where I get all my good information after <laughs> ten. <laughs> By the way. By the way, sell bacon. bacon. <laughs> That's when you know you got a friend right there. When they let you know when the Wright's brand bacon's on sale. Heck yeah, it's super low. It's so, a weekly ad. So this week for your 4th of July recipe, you did peachy baby back ribs. That was right. Those were delicious. They were good. They, so I was inspired from that from my apple pie ribs. And I said, well, I'm not going to call them peach pie ribs. That's too easy. So I just said peachy baby backs, which is too easy too. Yeah. But I kind of had that same concept. I wanted us to use some peach wood to smoke them with. I wanted to use some peach seasoning. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. I just, we sell heast online. So I said, we'll just, you know, use some heast and it's good. I used his apple in the apple pie ribs. I used Cosmos, peach, and jalapeno in the glaze, his rib glaze, inside the wrap so with did, some butter and brown sugar. I had a question about that. Did, did he bottle that to actually glaze on at the end of with the rib? You know. Or is it I more of a he, wrap? I'm, I'm so. Because I've only seen people use it in a wrap, mostly. Because I'll tell you what happened. Where people started using that stuff was the Texas pepper jelly. Yep. They had the rib candy. And people were always using it in the wrap. And so I think Cosmo probably came out with his products after that. And that's how they became using them in the wrap. But you could glaze with them. Yeah. It's you, you, I just you, usually barbecue sauce is typically what we glaze with. You could, if I was going to use it as a glaze like that, I would put the sauce with it. And it probably would have been good. I was worried about it since it was peach jalapeno, if it would have been too spicy there. I knew if putting it in the wrap, I would get the sweet and the flavor and it cooks out the heat. So, and I wanted to go with the fruity flavor on the back end. That's why I used the preserves warmed up and thinned down and mixed with the sauce where it was a little chunky but still smooth enough to spread. And it made a awesome glaze. Like, I'll use that. When I tasted that, I was like, man, you know what? I might could get away with that in the contest because yeah. it wasn't over-the-top peachy. But it stands out just a little bit from yeah. what probably other people are turning in. That's what I'm saying. I think, I think in Georgia it really rocked. Yeah. Because it has that flavor without, I don't think you could know it's like, oh, those are peach. But you know it's a fruit and it's different and because it went with the pork so well. Yeah. Peach goes, peach flavor goes with pork. You know, apple does too, but the peach ribs were yeah, a, better than apple ribs, I think. Did you, did you think so? I did. I liked them too. And the peach, the, the apple, apple ones, the apple ones I used the apple butter in the wrap. Yeah. And so it gives it and that. And you used peach pie filling somewhere, didn't you? Not in the. You didn't? Not in the recipe. recipe. Okay. No, I didn't. I mean, that that would have been, you could have in the wrap. You could have put that in the wrap, too. It would probably been pretty good. Or made it with the sauce, yeah. added it to the sauce. Oh, they sell a peach butter, too, which would have worked. But see, you start getting into, it's got that allspice, that clove, that nutmeg flavor, and I was not really wanting to do that. That's more of the pie flavor. That's yeah. what you get from the apple pie ribs. This one's more just kind of peach with some heat, and it goes. But... You know, I wouldn't be scared to put a little heat on them. I was worried they'd have been hot, but they weren't, like, spicy. Did you think it was spicy at all? No. Because he's peach rub's not spicy. Our rub's not spicy. Yeah. Probably would have paired well with the hot rub, too. I mean, my mom ate them and said they were good. Yeah. So. Did she like them? I didn't. She yeah. She normally don't do super sweet. Because they were sweet. Yeah, they were sweet. But if she would have picked up too much heat, she would have yeah. definitely yeah, let you know. Yeah, at all. <laughs> But they were really, really good. It was a good idea. Yep. Turned out good. Okay, so when you pulled them out of the wrap, they were beautiful. They were. How did, I mean, 
that's like Cosmos glaze. I guarantee it. Because all I did was butter, half a stick of butter, cut up into pats, the brown sugar, and Cosmos glaze. That's all I did. And I didn't do anything to the backside of them. Put them meat down, and when I flipped them over, they looked like they were just beautiful glaze. Yeah. Like you didn't have to do nothing. You could have just set them there, dried them out, and served that without adding anything. And you use the barbecue rub. The barbecue rub gives the best color of anything. Yeah. You let it sit. I'm yep. sure that had something to do with it. it makes the color good. Yep. I haven't seen a, a slab of ribs come out of a, a wrap that pretty in a long time. In a while. Yeah. yeah. The backs were perfect. Those, but I mean, those are compart ribs, so they're you know they tasted good. Yeah. That's where you can really, to me, you can really tell the differences in the ribs yeah. uh, of the difference between like a heritage breed hog and a you can commodity. Taste it. You definitely taste it. Yeah. In that one. Port butt. I got some more that I'm going to do some for 4th of July, too. Are you going to do peak? Well, we got to do TikToks. So, no, nah, nah, I'm just probably just going to do regular old eating ribs. Can you do one slab that's Memphis Straw style? Yeah. I, I, I will. I haven't Just had hot that. rub, nothing else. Yeah, or something like that. Baste yeah. it with a little cider vinegar or something just to keep them, you know, from getting too dark. Mm hmm. That'll be good. And then dust them with the barbecue rub at the end. Just with some color pop. Start with some vinegar on the side. And some coleslaw. <laughs> I did do a coleslaw recipe, Tyler. That was really good slaw. It was a classic, perfect, like, perfect classic coleslaw. Yep. I usually don't like coleslaw, and I ate it in, like, two seconds. Really? It was, like, yeah. gone, yeah. How'd you do that? So I took, I mean. It was a super simple recipe. Yeah, easy. Bag set, bag coleslaw, two bags. Now, this is if you want to make coleslaw to go to a barbecue. Yeah. You know there's going to be several people there. It makes a big bowl. It was two 16 ounce bags, I think. So, mm -hmm. of dry slaw, and it's got the carrots in it, cabbage, and that's about it. Really. You could really use any of yeah. the dry slaws. Use the Vidalia onion, finely, finely diced, like almost minced. I actually ran where, it on the mandel. Yeah, so it kind of disappeared. Yeah. And then um, probably a good half a cup of sweet pickle relish, just to give it a little bit of, you know, sweetness, pickle flavor. You probably wouldn't know it was in there. Because um, once it all gets mixed up, but I mixed all that together, and then I did just simple uh, cider vinegar, um, may blue plate mayo, and sugar. That was it. And then salt and pepper. That was all that's in there. I mixed all. I mixed the dressing up. I like to do that first. I'll put my mayo in a bowl, the vinegar, the sugar, get that mixed up, salt and pepper that, and then mix the slaw, the pickles, the onions in a bowl, and then pour the dressing over it. Mix it all up and just stick it in the refrigerator for one hour, and it's ready to roll. It's the easiest coleslaw you can make. You can even do it in a, bag, a Ziploc bag. That's what I was going to say. That's what I like to do. I like to get one of those big Ziploc bags, put all my dry ingredients in, mix my dressing, pour it over, yep. throw it in the fridge, and that way you can kind of toss it around, and you can take it with you, throw it in a cooler, and take it with you to the barbecue and pour it into a bowl into a when bowl you get and there. serve it, yeah. But doing it that way, doing your dressing, it keeps you from getting it too runny or too juicy. Like you get a good coating, and it's creamy, but it's not, like, watery. I don't like yeah. watery coleslaw. Well, you got to be careful because as soon as you put it in that fridge and let it macerate, macerate kind of, yeah, 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 the cabbage starts releasing moisture. That's that's where it comes from. Mm -hmm. So if you put too much mayo, it's going to make it real runny. And a lot of times you're going to get it. Have you ever seen somebody make slaw? Like my granny was the world's worst. She'd make, and it'd be a bowl. look like soup once you get <laughs> yes, it out of the fridge. Yeah. It's like, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Can't eat it on a plate because juice is running everywhere. That's probably why you didn't like coleslaw too much. <laughs> probably. <laughs> and one thing I've learned a lot of times is if you start doubling recipes with coleslaw, you can't double the mayonnaise. Yeah. It doesn't translate the same way. That's why you use, you make it up almost like a dressing first, yeah. slaw dressing, and use that accordingly. You also did a hot corn dip on yes, the grill. That was really good. It was really, really good. Uh, How'd you do that? Three cans of corn, can of cream, a uh, block of cream cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, two cups of Monterey Jack, two cups of pepper jack, a uh, can of green, big can of green chili, diced green chilies, whole jalapeno finely diced, and then just a little seasoning. That's it. That's it. It was fire. Yeah. It was better after we got it off. And then it's like, if we touch this up with, and I put cilantro over the top. Yeah. But it also, you added gringo to it. And I didn't do that in the recipe. The gringo set it off. I mean, it was like, man, this is delicious. It I would have, really had, if I did it, the only thing I'd change about that corn dip recipe is I'd add a lot of, a pretty good dose of gringo to the Yeah. You know what? That would be end. good. I think that would be good. Mix that up and stuff it in jalapenos and do, do a, you know, like a bacon wrap jalapeno oh. with a corn dip on the inside. Mm. I think that'd be delicious. Oh, that would be good. It'd be, uh, 
Well, I wouldn't be vegan because it's got be keto. It'd be keto. <laughs> <laughs> no, it wouldn't be keto either because the corn. Never, it'd just be delicious. <laughs> can't wrap it in bacon and be vegan, can you? <laughs> or you can't have the cheese either. I, I don't know anything about veganisms. <laughs> Well, um, it's July 4th this weekend. It is. Everybody's <laughs> going to be cooking. I'm sorry. I had to get me a sip of water. But, yeah, everybody's firing those grills up this weekend. July 4th is probably, I'd say it's the biggest barbecue holiday. What do you think? I mean, everybody grills on Labor Day, but I think July 4th is probably the one where people typically associate that I with barbecue, so. family get-togethers. People That's seek where, out yeah, a barbecue yeah. to go to or have one. That's right. I'm excited. I, I want to cook pork, but I got to find me a pork butt. I was looking. Do you I don't have one in the freezer? House. No, I don't. I'm shocked. Yeah. He normally I got, does. I got some ribs, but I don't have a pork butt. I need to get a. I need to get a. I need to get some pork butt. Um, I feel like a lot of people cook hog on July Fourth. Uh, just your family. I don't think a lot of people cook hog in general. <laughs> <laughs> did we watch uh, like meat. Pork? Uh, Matt Pittman. Yeah, uh, he did. He did one on a block. He had a dude from uh, Sam Jones. Sam Jones's guy come yeah. out. They did. They built a block pit, cooked a hog on it, and served it up. Have you ever done that style of hog? Uh, yes. It's been. A, I mean, I don't do it very often. There was a guy that what was that uh, writer's name. He always had people come down to his place mm. outside of Vicksburg. I went down there and they cooked the show. They cooked out. it similar. Yeah. Yeah. Same way. I mean, I don't know if they knew what they were doing. <laughs> They've been doing it for years, and then I showed up, and I was like, eh, let's think about Let's rethink this situation. <laughs> <laughs> so I kind of, you know, dressed it up for them, cleaned it up, got it seasoned, and they were they were doing some different stuff. They were, like, covering it in Worcestershire sauce and then taking knives and stabbing the skin and wanting to shove garlic cloves in it. I was like, well, you know, we'll, let's, let's try something different this year. <laughs> but it was good. It was real good. It's a, you know – that's I'd, one way of cooking a hog. I mean, I'd I like cook hogs it. for competition, so yeah. it's like a totally. It you take a hog and you put it on a pit and you do it, you know, skin down and you flip it and all that, and it's edible. It's good. You take it, and chop it all up, and you can chop some of the skin up. I it's like ugly it. as it could be. Yeah, it's no frills. I mean, when we cook a hog. I cook a hog. Like it's this. This is something you want to take pictures with. You want to invite everybody over to look at this thing we've done cooked, and it's beautiful. And the meat melts in your mouth, and you can taste the different parts of it. The shoulders cook perfect. The hams cook perfect. You can still take the loins out and slice it. I mean, it's the proper way. It, it's a, how a professional would cook a hog, not somebody just cooking them to chop up and serve to the masses, you know. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying, I think I can cook a better hog. <laughs> I mean, what do you think? I think that there is, I mean, I get what you're saying, and I You agree. grew up just eating the regular old. Let's just cook him to the oink gone, right? <laughs> and that's basically what they do. And it has its own unique flavor. There's something about it. Yeah. Oh, it's it's good. like I also like membrane on ribs sometimes. So, <laughs> no, it's good. I ain't gonna lie. Some hog belly cooked on the hog or temple meat coming right off that face. It's just some of the best meat you'll ever eat. Yeah. Cook I mean, just cook for twenty something hours, you know, with with sm good smoke, injection and everything put in him. I love it. The hog is my favorite thing to cook. I mean, I'm passionate about hog cooking. That's like, you ever, if, and I don't care. You, you know, you've heard me say in interviews that I do, what's my favorite thing to cook? It's always hog. Yeah. But it's because that's what barbecue is to me. That's hanging out with all my buddies. And it's not, it's not just one man. Like I can go cook a pork butt and I think that put it on, do whatever. Hog, you got to put in time. There's just as much work in the prep, getting it on the grill as there are taking care of it once it's on the grill and then getting it off. And so it's a process. And it's, you feed a bunch. You have to have a lot of people. Feed a bunch of people. Yeah. <laughs> it has Usually to be a mean, party. Yeah. Or an event, you know. So what July four sides are you looking forward to? Any sides? I've been, I've been craving some good beans. Like I'm probably gonna do some peach beans. Baked beans. Yeah. I've been. I don't know why I've been, been trying to do a TikTok on. You keep telling me don't do it. Don't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do one. I didn't tell you don't do it. I just said we don't have time to do it. Yeah. All your ideas, you have to narrow. <laughs> oh, I know, down. I know, I know, I know. But I'm, I've been craving some some good baked beans or barbecue beans, macaroni salad or pasta salad. I've Ooh, been a, pasta. a good cool macaroni. We've been bringing salad. that. We've been bringing up a 
one of your pasta salads for all these different things we've been dinners and stuff, and they always get scratched for some reason. Yeah. I don't want it to get scratched this week. You want That's pasta one. salad or macaroni salad? Because those are two different things. Pasta salads. Both. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't. I want both. I did a pasta, To me, macaroni salad is like the one that would be on salad bars. It's made yes. with blue plate mayonnaise. It's got some yes. pickle relish in it, pimentos in it. Yeah. Heck yeah. Little carrot sticks, maybe. A little bit. A little bit of shredded carrot in it. That's that's a macaroni salad. I it's agree. a great barbecue salad. It goes great with fried chicken. Yeah. We always had that with fried chicken growing up. That would be Mom would get it from the deli. Like you used to go, I guess yeah. you still can. It. can can does Kroger have a creamy macaroni salad? They do, and it's really good. If not you can buy it, like Reezers has one. I mean, you know It's not very good, but yeah. But when I think of pasta salad, I think of like that sun dried tomato one that's it's like a fancy. It's got veggies yeah. in it, and yeah. yeah, it's more of an oil based dressing yeah, than that. yeah. Don't want that. <laughs> <laughs> Both of that. <laughs> that. So beans, two pastas. Yeah, I'm starching it up. Beans <laughs> is protein though. I mean, you gotta have coleslaw, tater salad, deviled eggs. I'm I'm the sides guy. That's what I want. <laughs> you know, the meat. I'm gonna get the meat since it comes off the grill and eat what I want when it's fresh. And then you serve. You know, everybody else they're they're getting it after it's been panned up and everything. I'm just getting me plates of sides <laughs> <laughs> That's what, that I didn't make. You know what I mean? Yeah. Tastes so much better. Um, I did a really good tomato salad, uh, caprese salad. Yeah. 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 With the it little mo- right. the mozzarella balls. Mm-hmm. It's little tomatoes, uh, little mozzarella, little basil. Drizzle of balsamic. That's That was what came to mind when I was looking forward to July oh, 4th side. I didn't get mozzarella. I need to go get some mozzarella balls. Um, Tyler to go with the and some basil. What are your favorite July Fourth sides? So you guys were talking about pasta salad. I make a uh, pasta salad with like a peppercorn dressing that's really good. So that's oh. what I usually look forward. Is to. Is it a oh. creamy peppercorn? Uh, yeah, it's like a creamy peppercorn. I, it, we used to store by it for the longest time. They always carried it, and it was uh, just called creamy peppercorn. Then I kind of started switching it up a little bit because they didn't carry that anymore. So I started going with like a it's like a Parmesan ranch, and that was not as good. So then I started home making my own peppercorn dressing. Can't beat it. <clears throat> really? Do you crack, toast them and crack them, or is it just? Uh, yeah, you you cook it on the stove and stuff, yeah. and then oh, really? put it in, and then wow. it gets uh, yeah. So that's good. That has pepperoni. Um, it's a little pasta. It's a little bit of like an Italian pasta, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it depends. Insalata. That's what they call it. Most of the time, it's like the tricolor rotini. It's what my mom yeah. always used. Anyways. Yeah. Um, Spir- is that the spirals? The rotini. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I like those. That's like suddenly salad in the box. I love suddenly salad. Y'all ever eat those? Suddenly uh, salad? I don't think so. Oh, I grew up on Suddenly Salad. <laughs> oh, wait, is that like a ham- it's like the hamburger helper? Yeah, it's in a hamburger yeah. helper box. Yeah. Awesome. Suddenly Salad. You boil it and you mix it, and it's already got little olives and, and peppers in it with it. And- but see, the key is you take that Suddenly Salad, do it, but then add, uh, you mayo. know. Mayo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's mayo. Don't just use the oil they say use. Add, that's mayo. you know, more tomatoes and black olives and, and turn it into something special. That's what I do. It ought to be oh, Kickstarter yeah. pasta salad. Yeah. Suddenly. Kickstarter. <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Sally, when you get through with it, it's Kickstarter to start. It'll do in a pinch. And then I'd say twice baked potato salad, but I don't usually make oh, that. My mother in law does, but it's always so good. That's a good one. I do love that too. I lo- I mean, but I, th- I don't know. It's like a toss up. That's a good potato salad to me, but I don't, when I think of barbecues, I always think of just the old mayo based, you know, cold, real cold potato salad with the potatoes still got some chunks mm-hmm. to them. Yeah. That's good. That's a good. classic. But I like the baked potato one too. It's got the cheese, the bacon, and the green onion and all that in it. Anything but yellow. Like I can do you don't do the mustard base? I, I can't I'm not do crazy a about the mustard base one either. I like the I like the one you do where it's got a little dill, like fresh dill over it. It's real creamy. Oh yeah. You've got a really good um I got a couple potato yeah, salad recipes yeah. on the. On it's the, an automatic. It is. It what is, does it? Would you say it had? It's got a little bit of mustard in it, but not much. Not enough to make it a. Yellow. No. It's not a mustard based. You can always have a touch just to kind yeah, of like even it out. Even yeah. in my deviled eggs, I like to have a touch of mustard in them. Yeah. There's not much difference in the way I make a deviled egg. Then you make a potato salad. Then I make a potato salad dressing. You know. Yeah. They're very similar. Very similar. One's potato based, one's egg based, right? <laughs> I remember one time, the first time I made a potato salad for you, you made fun of me. You were mad at me. Why? You told me it was more like deviled egg stuffing. 
<laughs> I think you got a, you cooked the taters a little too long. I, yeah. And you made and you made a little bit too much of that dressing to put in there. So it was extra soup. You were true. You were right. I was right. I'm hard on you. <laughs> but it's for your own good. <laughs> <laughs> I want somebody to be hard on me. If my stuff sucks, tell me. I need to work on it. You know, you, oh, you don't with... like it when I do. I do. I do like no, it. I, I, I take criticism well. No, you do. <laughs> yes, I do. You tell me. I don't know what I'm talking you know about. What I'm talking about that's good. <laughs> well, sometimes that's true too. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes that is true. That's about. <laughs> Depends on. A, I need another take on that. <laughs> oh. Well. I'm doing that from love. From the <laughs> love. <laughs> uh, well, that's all the notes I had today. That's all the notes we had. Somebody's calling too. So, from New Jersey. So, enjoy your Fourth of July. Fire up the grill. Get out there. If you need some recipe inspiration, hit up How to Barbecue. Hit right, up how to Barbecue. <laughs> right. That's right. They also have an app yeah. that y'all can download. Yeah, if you're on download that. App. Recipes on it. The app's a great resource. Um, it's we, to we're going to have website. some new TikToks coming out um, all this week, really, because we've got the we're going to have a rib one. We're going to have uh, we got the apple one that just came out. It's kind of like it's almost like shells. Yeah, it's very similar. Gobbler. It's actually where I, I got it the all idea. American apple crisp. Same thing. Um, what was the other one we did? The coleslaw. Coleslaw be on there. Corn got a couple corn drink up. ones. I did. I did do that bourbon bourbon crush. Man, it was delicious. I ordered one at the watching the game the other night. The bartender did a jam up. She had never heard of it. She, she did a jam up job making it. Then I did the dull pineapple whip, like you can get at Disneyland, except this is the adult version <laughs> with whipped vodka. Looked really good. It did. We'll probably do some more. Fix it. Go do this BLT. See how it turns out. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we appreciate y'all hanging out with us, Shell. Besides the app, where can they find us? If you'd like to connect with Malcolm, it's How to BBQ Right on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, and of course YouTube. That's if right. you'd like to connect with me, it's Miss Southern Shell on Instagram and now TikTok. Yeah, and TikTok. Shell's been doing some. I got two. You got two. <laughs> <laughs> Tyler, what about you, man? Where can they find you? You can surprisingly not find me on TikTok, Tyler, on TikTok. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, soon to as be TikTok. TikTok, Tyler. As TikTok, Tyler. Yeah. So Are you still planning the, to do the thing where you you do TikToks just on trying Malcolm's food? Yep, I, I have like I basically been the been in the planning stages because I want it to be like mid shoot where I kind of like turn around and I'm trying it, so it's like a behind the scenes look at what we're yeah. doing. Yeah, and then also me. I eating think that'd it. be great. I think it's a good idea too. Well, well, I hope everyone has a happy Independence Day. Y'all be safe out there. Drink Miller Lite responsibly if you get into some cool ones. Have a fire extinguisher nearby if you're at the grill. <laughs> Break out those CG-13s and rock them New Balance. <laughs> and we'll see y'all next time. Did we talk about the New Balance? No. Oh, we should have <laughs> talked about that.